hi everyone welcome to another come to another interesting tutorial on this channel my name is Henry and in this very tutorial we are going to explore everything we need to know about building a rest API so first of all talk about the concept of rest API and how we can consume an API and later on we'll build a full-fledged rest API with the Django rest framework so first of all let's understand what an API is an API stands for application programming interface it's simply a way for two separate software to communicate with each other all right so what that means it means we can have two separate application built in different language or different framework we can have an application that is software application that is built with python and maybe another software application that is built with any other programming language api provides the functionalities for these separate applications to actually share their data or communicate with one another all right so in this case let's say we have a javascript app once we implement a functionalities in this app that allows it to send a request aside to another separate app which we process the request and give back a response all right so that is the simple work of an API so it's like an interface for two separate application to communicate a normal uh, HTTP request uh, uh, request respond cycle an HTML template is actually given back as respond but in the case of API a JSON respond is given back so what is JSON JSON it's a way to notate what object looks like it doesn't have to be done with JavaScript it's supported in almost every program language so it's a new standard for API data transfer. Unlike our normal HTTP request that returns an HTML template, but this our response is given back in the JSON format. Although there are some APIs that use SMA, and then um, SMA is like a kind of an old-fashioned uh, way. So whatever information that the client applications want to get from the server it is defined by the endpoint of the api all right before i forget note that the api communication is in one direction what i mean by that is an api is designed in such a way that only one of the applications can make requests let's say one of the application have to be a server with a database that contains some kind of information while the other application has to be like a client or a front-end application which can be like your footer your react a v or whatever front-end application so the request is a one-way operation one directional operation so the request is actually coming from the client while the other software is like the server that gives back the response so that's that so we're talking about endpoints because endpoint actually defines the kind of data that can be requested from requested for I me mean. so let's say we want a list of users from the backend server we want a list of products so there need to be an api endpoints that defines the list of products api endpoints that define maybe the list of users and things like that so before we talk about that let's talk about the rest because we're talking about rest api we've talked more about api now let's talk about the rest rest stands for representation state transfer this describes what means we are using to actually communicate or like in, in a real world situation where two people communicate there's a means of communication it can be through texting we are testing each other or through phone call all these are said are means of communication so the rest figure in the rest api is actually the means this means that the transfer is done over the web so that's why this rest actually stands for it means that this transfer between these two application software is done over the web that means it's using the http protocol or the http request and response cycle so that's what rest api means oh there are other apis like the soup api also but in this case we are talking about the rest api so that's what the rest so for that reason we'll be using our http method uh the get the post the put and the delete which is also for crude operations all right so any endpoints that you specify as get 
we know that that endpoint can only retrieve by the endpoint that is specified to be a post request that endpoint can be used to add data to the database or add data to our api um put is the update data to our api and delete to delete data to our api so we also be using this http method so that's that so before we go into um, the jingle rest framework um, why would we want to use an api in our app let's think to ourselves why would we need to use an api why can't we just build everything together just the front end having direct access to our database and all that and uh, something like this let's say our front end having full access to our database instead of going to an api why do we need an api what are the benefits of using an api so let's look at the benefits of using an api number one benefit of using an api is security security in the sense that your api only expose the required data that is needed by the front end instead of giving full access to our database we only expose specific data that the front end needs to the um, front end engineer and the users can also see that instead of having direct access to our full database remember in our browser you can see the codes and resources of every web page or every web app through the console when you inspect your browser you see all the data and everything now if our front-end application have full access to a database he, an hacker can easily compromise our database through the browser by seeing all the resources and all the codes and everything that we have in our database through our console and that will not be a best practice and that can also lead to some kind of a hacking risk so an API provider security of allowing us to only expose the data that the front end needs while keeping those that the front end doesn't really need safe so in that case many of our users data can be saved and why those that are required can only be given out through the various endpoints so that's a, 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 a one then two we have a um, versatility why do i say this is that we can have one single backend with one database we're talking with a um, multiple front end like a mobile app and also a, a web application and lastly is modularity modularity this simply means that our back end and our front end can be developed independently all right so we can have separate team working on the back end and those working on the front end so whenever there's an update in any of these uh, team maybe the back end team are doing an update it will not affect the front end or whenever there's an update in the front end it will not affect the back end because these are built separately independently of by different team so that but our next we need to look at how we can consume api resources so how to consume a rest api all right so different apis have their policies and standard or rules that should be met in order to assess their data and these requirements are defined by the api developer most common requirements for many public apis are authentication and authorization and all over the internet we have several apis which some of them are free some are public and free some are private some you have to pay a fee for you to access the data all right so many of these apis once you sign up they'll give you an api key which you use as your authorization key this is a common standard across several apis not all apis does that there are some public apis that you don't have to provide any authorization key you just have direct access to the api endpoint that's if the api is structured in that format all right so most of the common rules is once you get your API resource, uh, your API key, you can make requests to the several endpoints. Now, an endpoint is simply a URL which contains the base URL, which is the URL of the website, and the endpoint, which is the uh, URL that takes you or that provides the resources that you need or that this API is supposed to you. For example, if we have a website, this is a website name followed by slash API slash product this endpoint will provide a list of the available products that if it's 
something like that where something like this slash plus slash id whatever id you specified here shows that uh, it will give you a specific product with that id all right so the endpoint is actually the this very part of the url which is slash abs as product and slash abs as this all right and then um, these are the endpoints so once you get your transition key you be exposed to the different endpoints that you can make requests to with that key and how do you use your API key when making a request? Depends on how the website rules is being structured. But most common API, you have to attach the API key to the request or maybe to the HTTP header. And we have several libraries that allows us to make API requests very easily. The Python popular one is the request library. And the JavaScript popular one is the Asus. Alright, how do you use this library to make requests on API? We simply just do request.get, that is if the API standard specify get request. Now another thing is once you get the list of the different endpoints, now that tells you most API in the other competition signify the kind of request that you can make to the different endpoints. Some endpoints you can only make get requests to them, some you can make get and you can also make post, while some can only make post requests, but most public and then uh, private apis only exposes get requests you cannot make changes to the database you can only consume the database that is where the security actually comes in the users that are consuming your api can only see your data that is if you structure your api in that format they cannot actually make changes so that's that now you can make requests common request is your api endpoint which is your full url which is the website name followed by the endpoint and most cases you are to attach your api key you see a variable where you see something like this api key and you have to provide the api key that was given to you that is one way another way you can attach your api key to the http header that is conversant in the javascript environment all right so this is how we can actually consume an api from our front end by making requests to different available endpoints all right, guys, now we're going to build our own REST API with the Django REST framework. All right, so the Django REST framework, it's a powerful and flexible toolkit for building web APIs. It's built on top of Django, and it's very easy to use. If you are familiar with the Python and Django framework, it will be a walkover for you. All right, so this is the official documentation of the Django REST framework. It's a very organized and well uh, spread out documentation that you can follow. They have a lot of resources here. They have tutorials, they have API guide. You can actually learn a lot here. So I would strongly advise that you go through this documentation and read and try to understand many of the concepts. All right. But aside that, we'll try and cover almost everything we need to build a full fledged. Uh, REST API will cover serialization, will cover authentication, permission, we also cover cover and uh, testing, how to test our API, I also talk about documentation. We'll be using the Swagger UI to actually uh, Swagger and open API to actually document our API. Alright, so before I end this very first video, I will talk about the demo of the API that I want to build. The API I want to build is a simple API called Chef Story. The idea here is actually a place for chefs and cooks to actually document their discovery, their different food and recipes that they have discovered, although they have prepared. So they like a place for them to actually document these different recipes and these different food that they have made as a chef, or as a cook, for others to actually consume the different recipes. So it's a kind of a very simple idea. So this is the Swagger UI documentation. And then here you can test. Let's say we want to get, uh, let's get food, all the food. Yeah, you can test it out. But here we are not dedicated, so it will allow us to try that once you execute. You see it on authentication credentials will not provide so this is this is done by open api and so again you are all right so it's a, a well organized documentation and this documentation is very 
uh, useful especially when you are working in a team where you have separate front-end engineers and back-end engineers so you can build your back-end api and document it with Sagra ui and give this documentation to a front-end engineer without explaining anything once the front-end engineer goes through the documentation he knows exactly what to do how to make his request and all that so that's what the that's the purpose of this documentation and all that so you say uh, education credentials are provided so let's try and create a new user once we go on the authentication app you can see where we have you see the different requests that we can make to this uh, endpoint these are different endpoints in this api we can make a get request we can make a post request to create a new user so once we create a uh, post request you see it give a different a description he asks us, it tells us what is required for this we need to provide the username first name last name email password and, and a type of what password so if you try it out here we need to provide the values so let's just test let's say a uh, new user should be there we execute this okay you can see the validation also we are getting validation error it says the password is too similar to the first name which is a good thing all right so we need to change the say the password is too similar to the first name and that we have to change we execute um, all right now we see we get a 21 object created as a new user was created now we can sign in with this user to get our token so we need to get the use and uh, the email and our password remember our string one two seven one two login the login we need to provide this parameter we need to provide the email and this we can execute give us our api token so these are token that will attach to our header so once you grab this token you can attach it to your authorization here we have to provide them. all right now we can make requests to any route so let's test out some more endpoints let's execute this key once you execute this key you can see the list of food that we have all right so we can see we can actually test our api with swagger ui do a lot of functions so this is what we're building out we're building it from scratch all right thank you guys i'll end this video here don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up see you guys in the next video